Hello, Augies Worldwide. I'm Dave Kassler, amateur radio call sign KE0OG, here answering questions on another episode of Ask Dave. Today's question is kind of an interesting one from Marty. Marty lives not all that far away from here, and if you just got, go up over Monarch Pass, you're almost there. He lives in a flat area and uh, has a home, and the area above it is um, flat and makes a great way for the wind to come east and west. And there's really nothing to stop the wind out there. Uh, he wants to know about how to best secure a sloping NFED half-wave antenna in that environment so it doesn't snap. Well, such as a very taut wire, leaving some slack in the wire, or attaching some type of elastic material. Well, let's do a picture here. Now, he's got land out behind his house. Here's his back fence. So here's his house. Okay. And then out here, this area is open. And it's common area between the homes. And he wants to put up a sloper. Now, he doesn't want to come off the house if he can avoid it. But he could put one of these 20-foot masts that we talk about quite a bit. This is where you get, uh, it's actually, there's two. Um, this is top, uh, top rail for chain link fence. And it's actually steel. You put this up, it's 20 feet. Uh, this has a kind of a narrowed area like this that, that goes into the next pipe which comes here, about six inch overlap. So you guy it at the top. Now, uh, guy this with something that's UV resistant and no stretch. Um, Aiden and I tried to put up an antenna out back with some parachute cord I had, and that was a non-starter. That cord stretches too much. But you generally want to guide these, uh, guy, these things three times. Okay, so if you're looking at it down at the top, and looking at it as a plan view, there's your thing. You're going to go equal, and it's about 120 degrees uh, each of these. And you want to go from the top and come down at about a 45 degree angle okay and you can if you have one that is next to the house for example and again plan view uh, if this is the back fence and this is the house and your antenna is right there one of the guys can simply come back and attach to an eye hook on the side of the house and then your other guys coming out like this now you want to get stakes, uh, go to Home Depot uh, and ask for concrete form stakes. Concrete form stakes. You can get them in lengths two, three, two feet, three feet, four feet long. They're metal. You can pound them down in with a sledgehammer and they won't move. Now, you can also get a kind of a funny-looking cap for these things. I should draw this in orange because these things are, in fact, orange. And the top is flat, and then down the bottom, it has a hole where you can slide this down. It'll kind of grip the end of the stake. That way, if somebody trips and falls against it, they don't impale themselves. These are, what, about $5 a piece, and I'd put one there and there, and if you end up going into your yard there, it keeps people from getting into these stakes. Okay, so we've got this right here. Now, if I were you, I'd get a, um, this is like a shelf bracket, and you want to get the one that's got the metal there, otherwise this will bend on you. And put hose clamps here and here around the top of the mast. 
Okay, so here's the top of the mast. And then put a pulley here. And you can get all this at Home Depot. And then you run your cable up over that. And then you can use a hose clamp to tie it down at the bottom. But that way you can attach your antenna to this and put it up without having to take this down. Now, if you're just going to do it once, just put it up. Now, I recommend that between the top of the mast, again, plan view looking down, this is the top of the mast, and this is your NFED antenna. This will be the ballon, the 49 to 1 ballon. And you'll have your coax coming up here. And I would recommend that this cable right here, or not cable, but rope, put a rope here about three feet long. The reason is because I've done some modeling that shows that if you put the uh, feeding point of the antenna too close to the metal, then the metal mast starts to become part of the antenna. But you put your ballon out here, okay, and then here's your wire right here that you bring down to the ground. But what I would recommend actually is another 10 foot pole guide and so on to stand up in the wind. And then that way people don't walk through this and guillotine themselves. Safety is very, very important. You know, it's inexpensive to do it right and very expensive if you do it wrong. So. Now, what kind of wire would you use? I suggest THHN. Um, it'll be uh, the single wire, but it'll be stranded, so it has seven strands in here. All right, because that wire is so much easier to use with. Uh, THHN is actually insulated. The THHN refers to the insulation. Now, so THHN is soft copper. Now, this will stretch over time. Not very much. You know, in 10 years, you might have to take an inch off of it, something like that. You can, if you want to spend a lot more money, do this with hard drop copper, in which case you can yank it so tight that wire is practically straight. But why? When this is so much less expensive. Now I know that there's a lot of metal thievery going around right now, but a single antenna like this shouldn't be a very tempting target, especially, uh, you know, you, there's lots of different ways to make it. Okay, let's go through his question. Um, suggestions for how to best secure sloping and fed half-wave antennas in this type of environment so that they do not snap. Um, you know, it's an interesting factoid that it's the material that the wire is made of, not the thickness of the wire, that determines the snapping strength. Okay, and I'm talking about using soft copper, and you can actually pull pretty doggone hard on that without it snapping. I would not leave it loose, because then it will just sort of snap around in the wind. Get it fairly tight. Okay, and put the thing up, you should be okay. Now, um, yeah, don't leave the slack in the wire. Make it pretty taut. Not so taut that you break it, but uh, attach some type of elastic material at the ends. You can, uh, you go down to an auto parts store. They've got bungee cords, standard ones, and then they've got ones made out of thick rubber with a hook at each end. And that one will pull a little bit. You could use that down at the bottom end uh, there. That would work pretty well. Okay. Now, I assume this applies to multiple types of wire antennas, such as horizontal, inverted V, and so on. Yes, absolutely. The only time I've lost a wire on an antenna is when lightning hit it. And that was 30 years ago and um, the wire vaporized. Otherwise, I have never had an antenna wire snap on me. So, yeah, go ahead. Uh, do the best you can. And I think you'll do pretty good. You'll be on the air. You'll be having fun. So, if... Uh, 
So if you've been watching this video and you kind of enjoyed the content, please subscribe to the channel. Please also take a look at various ways so that you can support this channel by going to decastlercom slash support. And until we next meet, 73.